technologies for the cardamom and black pepper pest my pestan disease management and all and he is instrumental for the release of three cardamom varieties that's pv2 pv3 and pv5 and has later he has joined in cpcra kayangulam at kerala in 2007 and developed a novel botanical formulation for the pest management and also he has validated coconut based ecological engineering for pest management and also he has first discovered the sooty mold scavenger a beetle which is scavenging on this sooty mold caused by already uh, caused by the honeydew uh, uh, excretion of the white fly and uh, also he has studied a wide in case of regard to the rugose spiling white fly and the conservation of the biocontrol agents for the management of this white fly complex in coconut and he has published more than 70 research papers in peer reviewed journals and also he has presented several papers in the national and international symposia and authored a book and he has received number of national awards and to the best he is a recipient of the jawaharlal nehru award from icr for his doctoral thesis and also he has received icar lal bagadur shastri young scientist award and also professor tn ananda krishnan award for senior scientist and also azra young scientist award and he is also fellow of the icar association for advancement in pest management and horticulture ecosystem bangalore and also icr society for plant protection sciences new delhi and also in icar entomological society of india in new delhi and so he is he is working in a lot long period in coconut so it's very good opportunity for us to hear from him about the coconut pest and disease map pest management so we welcome you for delivering this lecture so i seem the uh, director madam head of the department other uh, scientists from uh, department of entomology and my dear uh, beloved students so it is indeed a great opportunity to stand before you of this uh, alma mater where i have learned my ug and pg degree program so it is uh, really a home coming to me i think uh, uh, ramonia's thesis made the difference i came here as an external examiner to evaluate that anyway uh, good afternoon to everybody so i'll be taking some of your time just uh, listen to what i am just trying to highlight something scientific something uh, how to orient yourself to a better future something about uh, my experience in coconut as such okay so this is how i will be presenting my area so if somebody asks what an agriculture is you should not fumble agriculture is nothing but harnessing solar energy it is not uh, simply crop production or whatever it is how best the plants are in a position to harness solar energy makes agriculture very very significant so whenever you have a breakfast always thank a farmer because agriculture is the only profession which has got a culture into that we don't call doctor as a culture we don't call engineer as a culture so agriculture is having a culture by itself what do you mean by that culture when you take food it is because you are not hungry you are very happy and you are listening to me otherwise you will not be even here that is number 1 number 2 if somebody uh, stomach is full and somebody offers you the best of the food like biryani you will say no to it because the food is always like that your stomach is always like that so that is why we call agri as a culture so you have to be extremely proud of your profession to start with that is why thiruvallur says uludundu valvare valvar matra ellavarum toludukondu pin silver so that is the base of that they live who live to plow and the rest behind them bow and eat so this that context we just uh, wanted to think agriculture as a profession and you also to be proud that you are going to feed the entire nation by your contribution to a smaller level for that matter okay so coming to my uh, institute can i have the next slide please my institute uh, is a very old institute it took shape uh, before the independence way back in 1947 to start with so i do not know how many knew about uh, the place from where i come from it is uh, called a small village in alappuzha district named as kayangulam so kayangulam is a place where you have a very very uh, debilitating disease called as root wilt disease 
so our institute started working on the root wheel disease way back in 1947 itself though we got a project somewhere in 1937 that is where the institute started but in 1947 the foundation stone of our institute was laid by the king or the king of the state of travancore at that time marthanda varma raja so he laid the foundation he is the person who has laid the foundation that is the view of the institute and this year is our asadi ki amrud mahotsav that is our 75 years of celebration so along with the 75 years of uh, amrud celebration we had uh, even our own celebration we had a very good inauguration we had our own uh, stamp released on this occasion we had a special postal cover so this is just advertising my ins- institute for that matter because our institute is known for pest and diseases and i am also proud that i am a part of that so this is uh, where i think i should uh, uh, salute from where i come from and you should also be proud of your own institute can i have the next slide please so i just uh, motivate the students by taking something of the science because the science which i have learned from this particular great institution something very unique i started my uh, bs agriculture in 87 to 91 so those times uh, the teachers are not like those teachers which you are seeing at this point of time they are a bit uh, a terrorist we are uh, simply uh, worried about them frightened about them if you are diagrams are not good enough your files will be flying out of the room in no time it will be air born so that was the environment at that time some of the uh, stalwart teachers if you hear the name dr ganesh kumar and all if he opens the file no people will be shivering not only uh, girls for them but even boys they will be because anything can happen to that so that was the way in which we were brought up and you know this institute itself the D- department of entomology itself has a founding father like uh, fletcher like tv ramakrishna iyer so you are all uh, a part of that so always be proud of your alma mater and my teachers like uh, professor uh, jerad sir when he was the vice chancellor of the institute i was a bsc agricultural student so he came to the field all through at that time there was an outbreak of helicobacter parmigera he took it he showed what a cadaver is what a corpse is and how are you going to use that and he is the person known at the national level as a biocontrol epithet to the entire nation at that time he took he groomed a great number of persons so what i am trying to highlight is that is the background on which tna is reverberating even today so keep high about the institute that makes a lot of difference so what i exactly wanted to highlight here is about the science of uh, anything which you look into that so when i mean science you have to say you have to understand what a reasoning is all about so suppose somebody is saying something to you you have to reason out so which means questioning is the key to intelligence how are you going to question that that makes the difference here so all these great chaps have made like that so your questioning can be something related to a basic science your questioning can be can be something related to your field level or applied science that is why the curiosity is very important the seed and the tree the curiosity to the lead so what i always feel is a kind of creativity should be in you so creativity is a pillar for innovation now everybody talks about innovation so when you have the creativity with a deep science so ask several questions to yourself to find an answer and that makes a lot of difference so my dear students be focused on that so how are you going to ask the question makes the difference here so the simple point here is uh, the constitution itself says to develop scientific temper have any student fought for this constitutional right when you have joined the institute so to have scientific temper humanism and spirit of enquiry article 51 eight says like that so always be very specific to that so the science of reasoning should be known to you so try to understand it very critically if somebody asks why do you have legs what will be your answer can anybody say i'll be very happy to why do you have legs when people are all uh, fumbled we move no plants move why that's the question so we have legs not because we want to move or we out locomote here and there we have legs because we are in search of food that is a fundamental thing plants no need to search food because that is why in the first slide i have put agriculture is about light and if you provide light to the plant that is itself enough and you don't have the ability to produce or put you are in search of that that makes very uh, different now whatever way you irrigate the crop 
it may not be that lushy and green but when a rainfall comes it becomes so attractive why because during the rainfall there will be lightning and thunders that will cleave the nitrogen a spray of nitrous acid will be received on the crops that makes the crop happy that makes the crop lushy and green. these are the simple questions one has to put forward so somebody asks you why the coconut leaf is split whereas the banana leaf is not split so that you can have food on that if somebody asks the question what will be your answer are you are all sleeping yeah you don't follow me uh, so what will be your answer coconut leaves are split but banana leaves are not split you can have food on that because coconut is a crop that is pertaining to the coastal area it is not a crop pertaining to polachi area okay so it's a crop protecting along the coastline in coastlines it is a braving the wind so if the leaflets are uh, broken you can brave the wind that is exactly why you have the coconut leaves like that and you have the great nut with the big husk you have seen that the husk is there because it is not to protect the coconut people feel that the husk is there because when it falls on your head your even if your head breaks the coconut should not be broken that's not intention the intention is very simple it makes the coconut float in the water so if there is no competition if there is competition it can float and get on there is no competition so these are the ways you have to think so these are the simple things which can ignite you to a greater level so my dear students always have that in your mind to make that very very simple so science leads to a technology and the technology leads to an innovation can i have the next one please so you should take the lead from the nature so nature is always nature is a very good matter for you so you start here uh, how a pigeon alights the right brothers came out with the aeroplane how the firefly illuminates the present day people came out with the lead lamps so these are all very simple things everybody can how the bats don't hit the object we go for the sonar light to go for the pregnancy testing you see the beak of the woodpecker came the bullet train our honorable prime minister is launching every day with the vande bharat what i'm trying to highlight is your original thinking will lead to us research to the science based and your innovative thinking will lead to a kind of a development that's kind of a product based and your practical thing will lead to a kind of design so these are the ways you should mold yourself so how are you going to do that so if i put in entomology terms entomology is a science ipm is a technology your sprayer is a design so it is in that way you should think so how are you going to tune that it makes a difference so how do you use a technology for a design and everything for that matter it's all inspired by the nature have a curious observation so in, once you have that that makes a lot of difference for you and that is the humble motive for you because whenever you are there you have to you are to be here in a great institute like this fix up a goal orient that properly and get along with the things next one please so in this context one should know how are we exploiting the universe so we have a very important terminology called as earth overshoot day it's a day on which the resources of the earth get depleted so you have to be very very careful so don't exploit the nature earth too much if you are doing so you are going to be in great trouble in future so what are you supposed to do so in uh, 20 uh, 2000 uh, uh, andrew sims told that in november 1 you have exhausted all the resources november 1st of 200 alli 2000 it's all gone the resources have gone that means november 2 is the day in which you are over exploiting so when it came to 2019 you just see the earth overshoot has come downwards july 29 which means you have exhausted all the resources we are using everything with the nature can produce a supplement for you and finally what happened you see in 1929 uh, 2019 we it came to july 29th thanks to covid had the covid not come it would have further gone down since covid has come one month it has gone upwards so we need a disaster to find you in ourselves that is how the nature is so you may now think why the covid has come to this world the covid has come because the earth has already overshoot and it has to see that it is not shooting beyond that level so in this context you have to be very very uh, uh, calculate you or you should have a design not a disaster for this so, so whenever you host have a very good vegetarian party reduce the use of papers too much go for a kind of a printing be a natural resource this but what i'm just trying to highlight is be a kind of a naturalist understanding the impact you give on the nature so that you evolve technologies according to that next one please so in this context you just see even in the field of agriculture many thing has gone you have hardly 
twelve crops, and of which the four yields more than fifty percent. What happened to the others? Are we really thinking about that? So this is very very catastrophic. Even in coconut, you want only one variety which is going to overshoot in yield. Is that what the nature needs? Absolutely no. You should have a diversity there. The biodiversity is very important. It counts upon everything you talk about. And if you don't talk about, it is going to be a very, very uh, ill, bad, or a catastrophic effect. What I can understand here is we know only 1.7 million species of insect, plants, and animals out of the 100 million which is known to the world. So unless and otherwise you know all these things together. So somebody who are interested in the biodiversity documentation, you have to go. Even in today, there was a discussion about the diversity indices. These are all very important points. which takes things in a very dragon level why uh, you had this uh, irish famine why you had the bengal famine all because we are focusing on one variety or two that should not be so the focus should be on the diversity if you have more the diversity even the pest management is going to come down so this is the way in which you have to focus too much on that so everybody will be uh, worried uh, why this entomology group or the entomology has become as a science i will come to that a bit later because you just see the numbers here insects around 7 lakh 50 thousand flowering plants 2 lakh 50 thousand numbers you just see how the numbers vary why are entomologists make going to make a great impact to the nature so we have to be proud of our discipline as well to this factor for that matter next one please so in this context i am very happy to say what an entomology why we have to study entomology it is not because insects are pests so most of that hypothesis which comes from an agriculture university is that insects are always pests don't think in that way alone insects are the dominant creatures 56% of your population 50% of the living organisms are insects why are they dominant why plants are not dominant why insects are ruling this world whether there are no famines there are no how are they sturdy enough to withstand all these pressure that is the point what entomologist Uh, was so interested to know about that is the science of entomology evolutionary background insects have evolved 350 million years ago you have evolved just 1 million years ago and you are trying to reach uh, insects this thing no they know how to manage because even your father and parents will say, uh, parents will feel that what you know enna pa unakku theriyum engalukku ena they have found at least some 35 or 30 years senior to you so they are experienced insects also feel in the same manner are human beings you are only 1 million year ago we are 350 million 449 million 349 million seniors to you so keep quiet don't shine for yourself we are there to take care of everything so another thing is insects are highly beneficial my dear students don't forget the beneficial role of insects when you have taken upma don't forget that you are taking the omelet of red floor beetle eggs as well so that is very important factor which you should not forget because you purchase rava you see it you remove the immature stages you remove the pupa you remove the adult but you can never remove the eggs it will come down then the next important operation is your roasting people feel that you are roasting for something else you are roasting only to make the omelet of red floor beetle tribolium castanium that's why when you take upma you feel so energetic don't forget to lose that so you can take kesari and upma too much so that you will get the energy of uh, the insect as well so that is how you should be proud of an entomology also and insect as such is now going to create a kind of a real issue that is where we have to uh, them next one please the globally the pollinators are declining all are worried even the coconut farmers are also worried except i think uh, in tamil nadu so you should also motivate our farmers that in uh, tamil nadu especially the pollinators are coming down people are not too much worried about the pollinators if pollinators are not there the insect in crisis so what they wanted to highlight uh, milman is very clearly he has illustrated to say very simply that if you are using even the street lights unwanted most of the beneficial insects are attracted light we say light trap is a technology but they say light is attracting most of the beneficial insects so they are making a holiday for the light at some point of time in which many of these insects are attracted especially the pollinators and the things so what they found is bees ants and beetles are disappearing eight times faster whereas the other things like house flies cockroaches are all increasing that is the observation that has come very critically so what does this say somewhere the pollinators are all coming down because of our 
ill habits or ill practices which you are uh, highlighting about or some of the climate change effects all these things add to that so this is the area where you have to very critically point out and climate change is one factor indiscriminate use of insecticide is another factor for our benefit we do a lot of things is another factor all these things add more values to that so my dear students take this into very important character so whenever an insect is talked about don't think only insects are pests always remember insect as pollinators insect as excellent food source also next one please insect cleans nature see coconut rhinoceros beetle is a pest on coconut that is what everybody knows we i have studied we have studied i am also studying further no doubt about that but when a trunk is there after it is being killed by red palm weevil if nobody is there in this nature no these beetles will take care don't worry so they do an excellent ecosystem services also how they do the adults will come and lay eggs there where on the dead stumps or dense stumps they will lay egg. they they will disintegrate a coconut tree uh, uh, dismantle coconut very beautifully so in one tree i have corrected more than 30 grubs of that so this is how they do nature but whether we really appreciate that no because for us it's a pest so we wanted to somehow kill them and if you see an area where all the entire coconut is there uh, the, without any crown these beetles will take care so these are some of the ways you should appreciate though i am not supposed to put a slide of this nature but still i have put because you have to always appreciate insect and the other point also so that is a point i think we have to be very very uh, critically uh, analyzing of that matter next one please have critical observation when i mean critical observation these are the sli uh, slide one student uh, took uh, ant these two ant to the professor maybe as enthusiastic as uh, you people are when you uh, brought these two ants to the professor the professor don't observe it then this fellow got irritated what observation uh, i am observing now that's why i brought it one with a red color abdomen one with a black colored abdomen and uh, two different species are you are a specialist in ant come on we'll uh, we both will describe then he don't observe it again an observation is starting so you have to observe it so what these uh, guide and student uh, did is simple thing they have observed it very critically they found the abdomen reddening is because of the infestation of a nematode into these ants that makes the abdomen reddened at the same time the abdomen gets uh, projected upwards you just see how the ant is looking it is projected upwards what does it indicate it is just to make the birds easy to attract and then pluck it off in the process the nematode is dispersed this is how the nature is and you know for this observation they are published in nature so for, to publish a paper in nature that is a dream of all scientists including me and i cannot i can only dream it i have not achieved it i do not know how, uh, with this knowledge i will accomplish also but what i am trying to say is this kind of information will make the guide and the student very prominent in the entire universe so this kind of observation is what is needed so they have observed it they have done it they have made a wonderful paper in nature so that should be target okay so when i talk nature i will come to that at the end because what he is talking about nature and science because uh, as an entomologist or as a scientist you should know as a science students you should know about all these things as well come next one please so before i start uh, my topic especially the white flies i thought i will put a word about quarantine see quarantine quarantine is a very important terminology i know what's the literal meaning of quarantine yeah that is nothing it is only 40 days that is the meaning quarantine 40 days so what uh, previously uh, the procedure is whenever a ship comes with some food materials it will never be allowed to disembark immediately they will be in the uh, sea for 40 days then expert team will go inside they will examine what they will examine if there are anything hidden maybe the eggs would have been loaded at the time of uh, uh, loading the material by the time it has reached here by 40 days now it would have become moth they would have seen the moth or they would have seen the adults so to identify that and see that they are either disinfested or completely curtailed or just sent back so they will never allow to enter in so that is quarantine and you know the quarantine act so my dear students if at all you find some time you have to read this dipa you know what is dipa destructive insect pest act it will be very boring but it is very interesting what to read these uh, uh, last you may think in that word that law came in 1914 and what you made you know 1923 in kerala there was an outbreak of black headed caterpillar you know that you might have studied it it is opc in arino sala isn't it so black headed caterpillar was devastating the entire state of kerala at that time 23 immediately the government has used the dipa act 
so what happened is all the agricultural officers in the district and the collector just like what we had in covid we are not supposed to move if you are moving you will be put behind the bars similarly they were doing the same thing if coconut leaves were transported across the district uh, collector as well as the agriculture officer will be in the district boundaries they will catch hold of the uh, consignment and they will either burn it or destroy it because they were so specifically adopting this quarantine principle at the same time they were identifying some of these parasitoids also which are responsible for reducing the population so that came so in 1923 that was the observation over a period of time 10 years they could very systematically follow it and i think now in kerala or for that matter the entire south india black headed caterpillar is no more a pest nobody reports that as a pest because in kerala at least they have excellent parasitoid breeding stations in all the districts of kerala so that is one of the reasons why this particular attempt has been made very successfully very simply for that matter and the result in it they had even a boat laboratory they had a laboratory with boat which contains the parasitoids the parasitoids can be released so these are all something so you can just see wherever there is an outbreak <coughs> the parasitoids play a very important role the pest population is gradually uh, reduced so earlier we were thinking about introduction introducing a natu- i mean parasitoid now slowly the augmentation strategies has come onto the world so now we presently talk more about the conservation aspect so previously it was introduction so the successful introduction is what what is the successful introduction story in this country i think uh, you are not sleeping yeah huh? which is a successful introduction into the country yeah one at a time hey be open here yeah? i am not going to put you in trouble <laughs> you have studied, learned about paracoccus marginatus ah uh, so how was that uh, acerophagus papaya they have imported they have imported the natural me from the center of origin and they have done it so that is the kind of introduction because Acerophagus papaya was not in the country, and Paracoccus marginatus is an invasive pest. It is an origin somewhere else. So they went there, they identified the parasite, they brought to the country. And here, these kind of things are augmentation. Augmentation. These are classics of a biological control. Biological control starts with a classical biological control, which is nothing but your introduction, or augmentation, which has got two components: either your inundation or your inoculation. Inoculation will be a one-time release, and inundation will be multiple releases, as we do for uh, uh, black-headed caterpillar. so we have goniosis nefandidis as well as uh, bracon breviconus including uh, our, uh, what is that Go, uh, this elasmus also so all these uh, parasitoid pre people parasitoid and even uh, your uh, uh, pupil parasitoids are very successfully there brachymeria knows that all these things are there which will take care in holistically so that the population comes down so this is how it is so asterias it was mostly about uh, introduction currently or sometimes some years back it is mostly about augmentation now we are mostly emphasizing about the conservation so this is how the things are moving okay so why conservation is what when the next slides will be next one please so i am uh, uh, my topic is just now starting i think i will uh, finish it fast so next one please so the major point is uh, the white flies have come to the country they has come to the country a bit earlier also you should know about them you should try to understand them you should see that how you can tackle them you should see that how you can curtail them i think today's uh, uh, se- i mean thesis seminar is all about managing a uh, uh, invasive white fly as well so all these things, so many theses have come out so many works have been people because this invasive pest had entered into the country so why invasive pest everybody are worrying it's a biosecurity threat why covid all are worried because we don't have a natural enemy we don't have a natural immunity to the system similarly when invasive pest comes we don't have a natural enemy so it will outburst initially that's the point so as far as white flies are concerned there are at present eight white flies one is at the uh, time uh, i mean it is already being described now it will be coming uh, published very soon so that is another invasive which is on the pipeline i can say so we have at least in coconut five white flies reported so my dear students have a look at it this are five white flies reported so it can it can be an exotic white fly as well as an invasive white fly the difference between exotic and the invasive exotics are all need not be invasives but all invasives are exotics so exotic means it is coming from another region but the way in which it causes infestation potential if it damages more to a economic level we call that as invasive white flies here in white flies again bondar's nesting white fly you, i can say only rugo spiraling white fly has reached the level of a kind of invasiveness and others have not done so so in 1993 came the spiraling white when i was a student at the time this was the talk 
spiraling white blood that is dispersed allylo discuss dispersed because allylo dysine is these two uh, group you are allylo discuss dispersers and rugi operculators all these things you have to very critically understand by the name by everything for that matter so that makes lot of difference so in 1993 the pest has come to the country dispersers has reached the country till 2000 there were even recommendations for spraying insecticide to manage this pest but what happened to 2000 in 2000 one team went to maldives one team from our country went to maldives under leadership of dr remani dr purani and team has gone to that and they brought some infested uh, what is that some parasitized piperium of this from maldives and they have introduced in the main country the result in this we could suppress the population very significantly so that is how it is and the same parasitoid was there with us and that is one of the reasons why the rugi operculitis were also very effectively managed because they are one and the same parasite which takes care of both these allylo discus species so this identity is very important so when you find something uh, new you have to see it first identify it go for the exploration the natural means and other things so rugi operculitis came allylo discus rugi operculitis came to our country in 2015 itself i think uh, dr srinivasan was there at uh, cochrane research station uh, he was working at that time he has reported to us as a icripon palm scientist in fact i am very sorry to say that we have missed it at the time we could not had we been a bit uh, uh, thing we would have at that time itself caught hold of that somehow we have missed it so here after that missing should not happen is what we i am also aiming so we went why have we missed it because i was not doing the taxonomy that's why the taxonomic aspects are very critical so what made the difference is uh, we have to identify what it is so in 2016 our team uh, shanas has done it immediately followed by sundaraj and selaraj has done it so the first person to report uh, rugi operculitis is not sundaraj and uh, selaraj also it is mainly by shanas it goes unnoticed it is in 2016 they have reported from kerala okay so at the time pollachi it is having the pest is having then came in 2018 uh, and 19 two nesting white flies so the two nesting white flies uh, white flies are para allylodus bontari and para allylodus minie they are absolutely half the size of that that i'll come to that and finally in 2019 came i think uh, dr selvaraj has reported in 2019 selvaraj from nbar has reported in 2019 that uh, it is uh, palm white fly allylo trachelus atratus so in total on coconut we have uh allylo discus dispersus though it was reported in 1993 from other ornamental crops it was reported on coconut in 1996 by pratapan in uh, rugi operculitis was reported by kerala agriculture university later by uh, our uh, nbr also uh, bnw that is bondas nesting white fly and the neonatal uh, our uh, uh, parallelus minia was reported from icr cpcr i am also part of that i am very happy about that and finally we have this allylo trachelus atratus which was reported again by nbr what i am trying to say is identity makes the difference so you have to identify that very very critically that makes the thing and we will see the impact later so in 20 uh, 2007 we have reported one native white fly called as allylo canthus uh, arik this was reported from uh, arikanet and this is a native one it is already there in the system so these are some of the white flies associated with coconut uh, there next one please so in four species except dispersers dispersers did not take a higher uh, uh, role there coconut dispersers is a uh, what i can say it's a minor pest the other uh, rugi uh, operculitis went all over the country bondas has also went all over the country so this is how it is so before that you should understand how it is and what are the symptoms it is how it causes to and that way i think you might have seen the many of the students have worked also just come down next one please so it has reached the entire country all the invasive white flies so the white flies if you see you can see the sooty mold in the top and the white flies encrusted down beneath so these are the two things you can very clearly identify very simple and based on the other characters you can identify so the honey dews are very rampant here because the insect size itself is around 2 mm quite large and uh, the nesting white flies are very small whereas this is quite large here so it produces huge copious amount of your honey dew that falls on the upper surface of the leaf and finally you can find all these things affecting the photosynthetic ability of the palms to have a reduction in the yield potential as well so as such it is not killing the palm it is weakening the palm and also it can reduce the impact of the uh, so we have five species now you should know how to identify them that's very very important next one please so in white fly normally it has got an egg stage anyway as a entomologist you should know uh, that basics i uh, assume that you have known we have three nymphal instars 
okay white fly we have three nymphal instars and we have one pseudo piparium or we call that as a piparium alone which is used for identification and finally the adult so in white fly this is the scenario in all the things you have a egg it many times it can be inserted also it has a stalk also it can be laid in a spiraling fashion everything is there but what's the problem the problem is in the field you don't identify them in isolation so in the first shot you will see alirotraculus atratus alirotraculus atratus you are palm white fly and the one which it sits is the, the puparium is uh, sorry the fly which uh, white fly which you see is uh, minie paralirus minie but it is sitting on the puparium of the palm white fly so see the confusion so the adult is uh, paralirus minie or the nesting white fly the first one p minie on atratus but the insect it sits or the puparium it sits is uh, uh, alirotraculus atratus or the palm white fly which means everybody will have a suspicion that this is the adult of this piparium absolutely no that is why the identity is very important see the next one the black one is the, your citrus black fly we call it as also white fly this is alirocanthus oglumi but very close to that you have bondar's nesting white fly the white one it is sitting nearby so they coexist so you should be confused to get it identified so you have to be very careful to look for the piparium for identity see the third one you have both the ruji operculatus as well as the bondari the bigger one is the ruji operculatus the smaller one is the bondari so they coexist so the moment you go to the field you take a piparium and see you will find all kinds of confusion so my dear students you have to get it very clearly uh, studied so then only you can really appreciate what exactly you are trying to highlight here this is the alirocanthus arica which is i told uh, our native white fly the black one but the one which is sitting here is your uh, uh, bondari again here you are a chilly white fly we call as peppers white fly alirotraculus trachoides alirotraculus trachoides co exist with the other leading white flies resulting in it creates a lot of confusion in the identification for which you should know the staining process identification very perfectly otherwise we ourselves will be leading into a kind of a confusion next one please in this character identification is very very critical so my dear students as a part of identification we stain the piparium there's a set of procedures even today morning we were discussing about the staining procedure it is not a, a kind of a rocket science technology it is only putting some stain making a very fixed process observing under the microscope and getting an image like this okay now just see the spiraling white fly the first one the first one is absolutely pure white in color adults see the spiraling nature of the egg laying it's okay and in the nymphal stage normally you find two growth like this absolutely white but that is not a feature of identification at all but at a single eye you can see that these are the features now you take the piparium you will find the entire habitus habitus is the entire piparium stained and normally in white fly the point of identification is your vasiform orifice vasiform orifice is so here you will find uh, the vasiform orifice the shape of the orifice the shape of the operculum and the lingula as a very important feature and also you will find lot of these other important structures especially in alirodizine where you will find most of these well developed compound pores these are called as a same time very interesting if you explore it you can really go into deep into what exactly you can look for you just see the compound pore of dispersus it will have a conical structure you just see the compound identification of the species see the eggs of uh, ruji operculatus it is not as circular it will be split here and there In the circular fashion it will be split and you can just see the puff at the end it will have a uh, one kind of puff here and see the size here both are more or less the uniform size but there it has got some black mottlings ruji operculatus that is how it is so the operculum is absolutely wavy that is one of the reasons why. and you can find the lingula here it is black as one of the features you can use the vasiform orifice as one of the features the position of the compound pores are very important you just see here really an exploration you can do wonders if you can uh, do that so my dear uh, students i always request you those of you everybody will never be interested those of you who are interested in this science can also peep into that this is a very very interesting area because you have 1708 white flies reported worldwide one third is in the country so you can become a champion we have our champions are very limited so far in the white fly that is one of the reasons we are not uh, uh, moving in the higher uh, level next one please so this is how you identify the <coughs> we normally don't use adults for identification that is also one of the lacunae so next came the nesting white flies they are absolutely half the size of 
the uh, spiraling white fly so nesting white flies by nature itself you'll find they are exactly half the size so that is 2 mm this is will be this will be only 1 mm there the piperium will be as bit swollen here the piperium will be absolutely flat the flatness of the piperium is another indication that it is bondas nesting white fly there again piperium so you can just see the piperium of this and this there is absolutely no difference you can see the adult of that there the adult is absolutely smooth with no markings here the adult has an x shaped marking x shaped but the important characters again come for the uh the staining process are the vasiform orifices so normally in nesting white flies piperium is not the diagnostic feature by the piperium alone you cannot in white flies the identification is mostly based on the genitalia why endo uh, entomologists talk more about genitalia you may be worried why these uh, entomologists are for that matter all these uh, biological scientists are very keen about uh, the sexual features it is not like that they are only keen because species are closely related interbreeding population if you don't know exactly if you are want to identify a species the genitalia is very unique because then only they can mate properly to produce a uh, fertile offspring that is why people study that and those minute differences makes lot of difference in cames of science for that matter so when we explored it we found uh, the uh, genitalia here with uh, typical how we distinguish so you may have to appreciate that accordingly and then you will go ahead with this so what is the present uh, stature of this this thing next one please if you come to the scenario this is where the population dynamics is very important when you go for the population dynamics you see the rsw in 2019 it was on the very high population up to 4 to 5 level it was going up and down now it is more or less stabilized that is a point which you have to understand so it was fluctuating earlier now it has stabilized stabilized in the sense now the population is more or less in a level which can be managed even by the parasitism by uh, your encarthia gudulope so gudulope does a excellent job in the white fly management especially rugo spiraling white fly and you see the population appreciate how these natural mist plays a very important role now coupled with the weather factors you find temperature you find relative humidity related with that is a kind of a positive correlation you will find always that uh, rainfall negatively correlated higher the rainfall lower the white fly population so all these are very crystal clear so in white fly population you will find the weather factors playing a very important role and the parasitism by encarthia makes another different role so these two things you cannot ignore and uh, avoid also next one please so i have reported i have told about the four species two alero dicine that is alero discus dispersus i have told about alero discus uh, rugi operculatus i have discussed about uh, palm white fly i mean nesting white flies that is paralelirus bontari and paralelirus minie now comes ali uh, your uh, palm white fly that is alero trachelus atratus so alero trachelus atratus is also having a black piperium whereas others are all yellow is cream kind of piperium here it is absolutely black so the by the looking itself you can identify to some extent but here what you have to under, uh, highlight here is you can find sometimes alero humble advice is once again to you you have to very clearly identify that just see the egg it is black colored whereas the other things are all whitish or creamish in color it's a black colored one once it emerges the crawlers will have a kind of eight puff like structure these are the a kind of uh, 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 a cup shaped a kind of a rounded lingula where it is not bifurcated identifying that critically on the morphology then only you have to look into the next phase so this is very very important identifying an insect at the morphological level you have well established keys for that critically identify then you go into the next step next one please so next in case of uh, white flies you have uh the morphology is an identification feature you have mostly the piperium as identification features in case of controversy you can even take adult as a identification feature then you have to go for molecular so molecular is not a proof for insect identification i again underline molecular characterization does not identify a species perfectly it is only a supporting evidence to a morphological identification which means simply you do some molecular characterization there will not end your problem so this is allerotrach this is allerocanthus arike again a native white fly 
this i am not going to talk too much on this because it is having its own natural enemy see how much of natural enemies are there it will take care so aliro can the zarike in our country never became a problem because we had this many natural enemies it caught the anthocorid bug we have ladybird beetles we have cybocephalids okay so this is how it is next one please now comes a very important factor my dear students i think this is the factor which i wanted to uh, spend uh, one minute here because in a nutshell you can identify based on the very important features i have been discussing egg nature you can see the nymph of uh, dispersers and uh, ruge operculators you can feel the adult features you can feel the important features of the operculum and all these things are there we have uh, very good publications for this you can see exotic white flies and conservation biological control if you type in the google itself you will get one of my publication you can read that it is very uh, it will give you all this information it is already published there and you will find uh, nesting white flies all the different stages are there this is their palm white fly the uh, morphology i have already proved now we wanted to know where the molecular stands so molecular what our students uh, do is whenever they uh, take a sample they go for the molecular characterization they would blast it and if they find something very similar now they will say they are very happy kindly don't do that many of the molecular sequences in the gen banks are incorrect so you have to verify for yourself now how are you going to do that that is very important so we have entered in lab whenever when we worked on this uh, paraliridas mini a we were hum, uh, completely misguided by one sequence in paraliridas mini a called as paraliridas the gen bank which is already available when we blasted our thing it was not matching with that so immediately a query has come why it was not matching so the editors of our uh, journal asked it is not matching so it is not yours so we have to argue that so we have to we have argued in such a way that though that is incorrect ours are more, more, morphologically tallying with the features like the piparium the genitalia hence this is paraliridas mini a once we deposited paraliridas mini a at least some 25 sequences immediately came into the gen bank so till then people were confused which is uh, the exact identity so don't be confused and how did we do it we did it because we got two or three characterization made and finally we concluded that ours is perfect so we deposit we had the confidence so this is how the young generation should work so don't go by what is available in the literature alone do it for yourself get yourself convinced if you are convinced you deposit with your authority otherwise you will be troubled and if you put a wrong sequence in the gen bank which i will come later you will be in trouble not today day after tomorrow no doubt about that so kindly don't deposit unnecessary things out of your curiosity it may be don't compare with uh, since npr has done it i will do it don't do that you do it for yourself get it confirmed you do it uh, two or three if everything blasts to 100 percentage that is fine otherwise you will be in trouble so this is how we are made so in uh, coconut white fly we have put it into three groups first group is aliro truculus group where the palm white fly fit in we had uh, nesting white we could conclude that in a similar fashion this is how it should go next one please so we have five white flies on coconut we have three more white flies on other crops so that also is very interesting so how are we going to manage it so ramonia also can take some clue from here this is where we have to be very very critical so this is exactly the encarcia parasitoid you will find at least 40 to 50% encarcia parasitism in the field that is the nature's mechanism and you will find all these predators apatocrysa species is there you will find cybocephalus there ladybird beetles are so many are there even endomopathogens are there even uh, endomopathogens are advised for spraying i don't uh, agree to that to a greater level so if you see weather factors play 30 to 40 percentage in the suppression encarcia plays 40 to 50 percentage and your predators play 5 to 10 percentage so this is how it is so we have to conserve all these things together so what we can do don't spray unwanted chemicals into the system coconut is such a crop it is not going to be affected your white fly is not to kill the coconut one or two leaves will be damaged these number of white uh, natural enemies are there they will take care so this is the approach we have to always think about next one please so i had a, uh, some uh, wonderful uh, uh, videos any anyway, for want of time and uh, this is a pdf we are not in a position successful parasitoid it could reduce the population of both aliro discus dispersus and aliro discus ruge operculate in the field very successfully we have not got any mass production technology so far for this particular parasitoid okay so this is the parasitoid and encarcia gudulope to some extent we have even encarcia dispersa but in, beyond that Uh, this makes a very very great impact in the system next one please we have a potential predator apatocrysa i think uh, thanks to uh, ramonia and team they have also mass produced this into a greater level 
here again the identity becomes a very very important factor so if you don't identify it perfectly you are going to be definitely put into task maybe not immediately in the long run so kindly do that very systematically so if you as i am not a great you cannot become a taxonomist in all the groups just see it uh, makes it all these things are there you find uh, the growth of that you find the adult here excellent it will feed adults it feeds very nicely your apatocrisa this is how we have taken we have good videos also those who are interested i will show you later next one please now what is this apatocrisa in our country so there is a confusion between apatocrisa aster and apatocrisa species i have put everything as apatocrisa species but according to dr purani what we have in our country not present in the one described by banks as apatocrite apatocrisa aster that is how it is it will be unveiled also but this is where we stand so identity is very very important to unravel it. next one please so here comes uh, the predator this cybocephalid predator can also feed on these white flies for a successful thing next one yeah just a minute so morning i used to go for some walk in my field so uh, i am also a fancy fellow like you maybe uh, not that great enthusiastic like you so whenever i go to the field i also observe so the moment uh, i went to a field once i could find some of these beetles on the top of the yeah. so when i saw these uh, beetles on the top i was wondering what these fellows are doing nothing is there on the top of the leaf so i went inside then i just put the eggs are on the bottom so i took off some of these eggs and put into the lab so we could find that particular beetle which is the later identified uh, by dr purni mad with the help of ul frank schawalder from germany as leocrinus nilgrianus leocrinus nilgrianus is tenebrionid beetle it looks like a uh, ladybird beetle it's a tenebrionid beetle which feeds on the sooty mold you just see this scavenger like enga paakringa illaya toilet poombodhu paarunga nalaiki so your toilet brush will be like that so uh, normally the toilet brush brushes are designed only by the legs of insects so we are the architecture your designs of your shirt your uh, suridar everything comes from the insect uh, uh, butterfly uh, designs so we contribute everything so be proud of uh, entomologist as well so this is how the insect they feed and when you do when you conserve all this process here no your parasitism your uh, encarcia will uh, by the parasitism is reducing the pest infestation and the sooty mold is also scavenged so bio, it is called as a switch bharat or switch palm abhyan we call switch bharat in a different angle so this is switch palm itself is made clean by this particular beetle i have not seen this beetle in polachi we have tried to release it it was not established because this is endemic to uh, the western ghats and the point which i wanted to highlight here is this was discovered by uh, kazab in the year 1946 before we got independence that is the potential of westerners and what we are doing You, it's anybody's guess so uh, this is how we have to explore things and uh, when we gave this insect to uh, dr purani for identification she told it is uh, not a lady i i thought it was a lady bird beetle and she told no it, who told it is lady bird beetle then i was confused what this madam is talking she is an authority in uh, thing and finally when we got it identified we felt very very happy how an expert talks about the science to the per uh, perfect links and there was a query raised how you say that it is feeding on this uh, sooty mold so we have dissected the insect gut and you can see the gut it is full of the sooty mold and that is how we could prove to the uh, people that it is there we have some videos we'll show that next one please so what are we doing to do in white fly management so yes, today morning i think our proctor madam was also mentioning about that this is one of the wonderful strategy i encourage this strategy very greatly i think every entomology group should have a kind of a garden owned by us and that should have everything what do you mean everything you name everything it is having here it is heterogeneous landscaping everything you have you have bird perch you have owl perch you have fish tank you have honeybee colonies you have intercrops so many intercrops you have reduced pest incidents this is the climate smart farming this is the even if the heavy rainfall is there water will not uh, leach away it produces different kind of volatiles the pests are repelled off so you can make your system very so i am very proud of this farming Yeah. Now we find time. We can go over it. So it's only a five minutes uh, short. You can see how we can make it in the system very holistic. Next one, please. 
<coughs> this this is top of that so uh, dr uh, srinivasan i think he was in aikripan uh, uh, palms working at aliyar nagar uh, i think uh, our uh, tnau friend so he has devised some techniques for scoring i think is very valuable information i was also a part of that and we could find that uh, most of these uh, uh, orange colored one especially the cod found to be on the higher index scale the dwarfs are higher index see the tall varieties are extremely very low in the case of indexing of that and this is a very good strategy for that next one please so we have advocated largely a kind of conservation biological control so these are some of the strategies it started with pesticide holiday conservation of the natural means water spray only if the parasitism is less than 50 percentage nutrient stimulus to some extent the ecological intensification what we have made it that's the point of your interest just because of not spraying insecticide we can reduce the white fly population and we could conserve next one madam please just see how much of money as a, uh, an advocator i could advise to the government of india has earned 17.58 billion rupees just because not spraying just because of not spraying this much of pollinators we could conserve this much of sutimol scavenger beetle we could have this much of things we could conserve i have put only 10 paise for each insect the money comes to around 17.58 crores even if i had left something in terms of yield also it is not going to manage so this we have uh, got it accepted and published also so what i am trying to highlight is this kind of information of ecosystem services of insects is lacking and it is a high time that you people also get focused on this particular thing next one please so next comes another important uh, white fly i think uh, dr alagar was uh, also a part of it when i came here he assisted me to get this particular uh, white fly collected from coimbatore in different places i think in uh, our orchard we have collected that we have taken for molecular characterization already it was reported by our people from our country fine and our molecular data did not tally with them that's the problem when our molecular data did not tally with them i have told them very frankly what is that whether it's a cryptic species so we did the collections we did it we went for the other actually found in anecocatus africa that the broken chain is continuous so this one of the identification mark and you can see the pectinate process in the uh, opening part so these are some of the features of alienthemis plocosis now the point ends they are not so the sequence was i mean the um, uh, dna was sequenced Our source not tallying, so we need not leave it. We made it. We I took uh, the sample from Coimbatore. I came twice here to Coimbatore. Uh, one time I met uh, Alakar. He supported me. We collected something. So it's a confusion whether this is one and the same or something else. Because in the original publication, they have published some other sequence. It is not tallying with me. So I we made it uh, perfectly for three times. so these are the three data are institute only uh, our own friends only are doing no doubt another is by ciit central institute for tropical agriculture so we have challenged them that what you have deposited is incorrect and what we have deposited is correct so we it has come like that we have published it till date nobody has even asked it i have written to that uh, wi uh, ciit that uh, what you have deposited is incorrect no reply so far and our npr friends very well know that what we have uh, what they have done is also they also know it i am not finding fault with that but students should be very careful in this so if you are going to deposit something uh, faulty it will be definitely reflected future i will just show even alirothensis flaccosis tna has also done it unfortunately tna samples are also we have not put in the paper because there are some students work so we have not put it institutes we have put it students have to be very careful so we are not shown the st student sequence there but our data is not tallying perfectly with the uh, the tna data also just next one please tallying means definitely the molecular sequences what they have deposited is incorrect because we have done the adult we have done the piparium we have defined what this insect is and for this insect this is the uh, genetic character that is how we have defined it so if there are anybody to uh, counter that yes they can do no because in science it's always like that so you have to grow to that level and this is supporting evidence so if every, all the three is perfect nobody can put you in trouble so this is how you have to define a species especially in the white fly so we are very happy to do that next one please so we have the alirotaculus tracoides here again uh, we did it to the higher level here if you see the link our characters are mostly looking as alirotaculus tracoides this is peppers what is pepper capsicum it is chili chili white fly okay it's very common in kerala i think it's not uh, that serious in uh, uh, here next one please so this is a very important thing i think i should uh, acknowledge uh, the role of uh, mr uh, logesh he is a phd scholar in uh, uh, madurai what i did is when i came for this transboundary pest management uh, symposium at uh, kwampur 
I think uh, I have informed to Dr. Alagher also. We have seen some of the white flies in the subabul. I never knew that. I, we were not in a position to collect that at the time also. But uh, this uh, Lokesh has collected this. He collected that and the, the sample came to me and uh, we did. In the meantime, we also got it from Glyricidia. We never got it from Subapul. He got it from subsequently from Subapul also. So this white fly never flared up. And how to identify this tetraelidurus acacia are three important features. One is from Madurai, he has identified two important biological control agents. Yeah, and he has published that in uh, the National Conference for Biological Control in December 2022 and got the best poster award as well. Why I wanted to highlight here is why this pest did not flare up. That's the point. The pest did not flare up because we had the natural enemies, amita species and closely associated species. That is the reason. And that could be identified. And that is why this particular white fly did not flare up in the country as a whole. And we have to attribute such kind of uh, points to add more signs into that. That is the point which he has given to me. Next one, please. So we have one more. Uh, this is, I'm very proud to say, this is uh, in the process of publication. This is uh, Aliro Clava Kanange. This is from uh, Coleus. We are in the process of reporting that. And uh, this has uh, uh, been reported long back from Malaysia. It is not a greater pest. We have natural means to this. This is just for information. Aliro Clava has a very unique character. Here, the To do this work, we have taken an international scientist and he has supported us, Gregory Evans from USDA. He is uh, a part of this. He is so happy with what we are doing, the, uh, especially the thoracic. We have done the molecular for this. And so much of mysteries are coming out. So just wait for a couple of months, it will come out. So you'll see how best uh, this kind of uh, exploration will make new dimensions of science in terms of identification of molecular characteristics also. Next one, please. So we have only a couple of slides more. You have some of the uh, features of these. Uh, uh, yeah. So it's more than the midline, so it's half the, uh, less than the midline. So we have characterized, characterized that we have told this is one of the very important feature to identify the genitalia of an insect, though it looks similar. So this is how. We have to look and explore, and I think uh, you people can do that because you are the young mind, the vibrant mind, the brilliant mind. So naturally, you can do that, and that is how. That is why I am here also for you. Next one, please. So from CPCR, we have one uh, e <coughs> mobile app. Those who are interested, you can go to the website in Play Store and download it. We have all this information uh, available in this uh, eCalpa as a uh, mobile app. Next one, please. It's have all the information, two way things. And uh, this is one of the detector which we have developed through artificial intelligence. The red palm will produce some sound. The sound will be detected uh, in the tune of what we have recorded in the system. It will immediately say detected. So we have to we have grown to that level. So it needs some more refinement. This is artificial intelligence in pest management. Next one, please. So we have a kind of a, a surveillance uh, system. How to make so drone. A morning uh, uh, agriculture officer will come, switch on the drone, it will go to the entire village and come back and say, this many palms are there, this many palms are with the red, uh, rhinoceros beetle, this are with the red palm, we will go and do the particular operation needed. So we have gone to that level of uh, pest diagnosis at a large scale. And this is uh, what, so this is nothing but the drone will go, it has got a uh, image sensing camera. So it has, uh, it will stitch the images, it will record it. So we had around 89 refinement so we are it next one please so my dear students this is the core of the issue so whatever it is whatever way you identify you have to think we are in a process of one health mission one health is a concept which everybody are talking about one health to a uh, one world so what is that all about if the soil is better if the soil is good enough you'll have better plants if the plants are good enough you have better animals if the animals are good enough the environment will be better if environment is better a good human beings will be there if environment is bad you are all lost so see that you are carrying the environment to a greater level. Next one, please. So this is very important. So this is what I kept for you. So science and nature, that's what the ambition for all the scientists to publish. So I have an uh, idea to publish in science and uh, uh, nature. And can anybody say what is the frequency of this journal? That's what I wanted to know. Frequency means, you know, Kumudam. Science. Library alien and again. Click of the mouse is our library now. Yeah, yeah, even I don't go to the library. Everything is there in our click of the mouse. You look into the nature. What's the frequency, madam? Anybody? 
எல்லாரும் தலை குறிஞ்சிருக்காங்க ரெஸ்பெக்ட் ஓகே நேச்சர் இஸ் அ ஜேர்னல் விச் கம்ஸ் ஃப்ரம் யூகே பிரிட்டிஷ் அசோசியேஷன் ஃபார் அட்வான்ஸ்மெண்ட் ஆஃப் சயின்ஸ் இட்ஸ் பப்ளிஷ்ட் எவ்ரி வீக் எக்ஸப்ட் ஆன் த லாஸ்ட் வீக் ஆஃப் டிசம்பர் அட்லீஸ்ட் கோ த்ரூ த ஹெட்டிங்ஸ் ஆஃப் த பேப்பர்ஸ் பப்ளிஷ் வேற ஒன்றும் செய்ய வேண்டாம் டைட்டில்ஸ் மட்டும் பாருங்க யூ வில் கெட் தேட் மச் ஆஃப் இன்ஃபர்மேஷன் சயின்ஸ் Association for Advancement of uh, Science from US. It's a weekly journal except on the last week of December. Just to see the title of this article is published. Don't forget to read Science Reporter which comes from New Delhi, National Institute of Science Communication and Policy Research which is inside the IRA campus. It costs around 30 rupees or so but it is very interesting. Don't miss it. You can go to the online site. papers published 6 months back you can just see into this uh, science reporter it is for csr journal and the science every man science kindly don't miss this next one please so uh, humble advice to everybody which i normally put for all the students seven hours are very important fix your goals what you want to become this is the point which i discussed in the morning also nobody in tna you now prepares for ars examination i was wondering what is that due to maybe you are so overburdened or you are not interested in the science what you are dealing with so kindly prepare for that it is only revising your syllabus perfectly and appearing for the examination with a good frame of mind if you are doing that you will get it otherwise you are going to be a big big losers so kindly fix your goals you study to accomplish your goals but somehow we do not know what your goals are and you are uh, ending in problem so fix your goals record the information whenever you record have or uh, all senses when fine tune then only you can record the information perfectly revision everybody even i do re- revise this so you have to revise once in a week once in two weeks once in a month once in six months you will get it through you can you can be a, a masters in your science whatever it is resist don't see unwanted things right now everything will be there don't give focus for that rest for the examination people don't even take rest without sleeping they will come for the exam hall they are sleeping in the exam paper so kindly don't do that so uh, sleep well before the examination you will flourish well reproduction is possible only if you rest and finally you should have a revelation from god so have a very good believers of god also that's also very important so learning is a continuous process it's a skill which never complete so you should learn not to know only you should learn to do you should learn to live in harmony my dear students should learn to live in harmony that is very very important you should learn to be everybody has a talent use your talent perfectly you are competent and you should be compassionate also as well so finally you have to see the best way of learning is teaching others you even if he is not interested no you, you call him and teach him something he will go away from you don't worry you will become a champion of that that is how i do whomso ever comes i think uh, dr kan and dr alagar simply will ask some questions so they will fly from me but they don't do of course so in the process you are enriched they will also be forced to enrich yourself so this is how you have to learn it and you should have next one this so the take home message is very simple have a goal be positive work for a environmentally responsible world and hold mental versus self reliant is very very important so see learn from the insects next one please last one see how a insect is balancing a water even if one drop of water is going the other even if one insect falls down the water will go the other side but the insects are not allowing this is harmony living in harmony so insect teaches you many thing but you don't appreciate that and that is all it is so thank you so much my dear students for your patient hearing and thanks uh, the organizers dr uh, uh, madam i think uh, the director spending uh, uh, to listen to me is surprising uh, rather she has been here <laughs> and uh, jera nelson sir all have taken pain and uh, my colleague i think dr srinivasan i cannot miss him because he is the person who has devised the writing scale for the rugos piling white fly so we were uh, working with her alagar also i cannot and our kanan they are all uh, part of my uh, uh, curriculum thank you so much uh, thanks a lot madam any questions are welcome if there are no questions there are two options in that you have understood everything or you have understood nothing i assume that you have understood everything what i have spoken right adukum satham illa no problem yeah madam please okay anyhow uh, pheromone traps i have a very uh, different opinion i am not uh, uh, talking always in favor of pheromone traps for information uh pheromone trap has a mixed feeling in coconut system 
Okay. We have pheromone traps for rhinoceros beetle. We have pheromone traps for red palm weevil. We have even uh, my colleague, Dr. Subaharan has developed some nanoporous matrix where you can fix these pheromone into that leaves and you can sustain the longevity of the pheromone leaves for a long period of time. But what exactly the field inferences are, especially in a system of Kerala, when you keep a pheromone trap, insects are attracted. 10 falls on your trap and 10 falls on your coconut. Okay. That doesn't mean that all the insects in the system are trapped in your trapping mechanism. So you have to have a refinement of where to keep, where not to keep. So what we advise right now is you don't keep the trap in the field. You keep the trap outside the field. Now, if you keep the trap outside the field, the number of catches are very, very low. Number of catches are very, very low. So uh, pheromone is a international buzzword. The entire world is working on pheromones. Before the pest came to the country, pheromones are coming. Tuta absoluta. Pest came before the pheromone has come. I do not know what the intentions are. Spodoptera frugiparda, pest. Pheromones are ready. Yes, we have to go a long way for the pheromones. Yes, our big, better team, I think Dr. Kamala Jain, you have to listen to her. So an outstanding speaker, I think she spoke in National Science National Conference on Biological Control. Dr. Subhakaran, you have to listen to them because you should always not see that what this fellow is talking is uh, the, you have to listen to them. There are good signs in that, no doubt about that. And it's a science of very commercialization. Okay, coming to your white flies. We don't have any pheromones so far very successfully employed on the white flies. I think some leads uh, our team are working. I think uh, now uh, Dr. Ramonia has uh, got some of these uh, metabolomes from these white flies. So if she finds something very interesting that can be developed as a kind of an attractant. Okay. Now if you attract, where to place the traps are very important. You cannot keep the traps anywhere as you like. So that itself is a mil uh, multi-donor uh, issue. And for parasitoid, what you are talking about, the host, uh, the pest and the parasitoid is a challenge. That is what we call as a tritrophic interaction. It's not very easy to understand. So you, anybody in this uh, country studies about ecology, I wonder, nobody. Nobody is, but without good sound ecological principles, biological control is also going to fail. So this is a part of it, it's a good question, but so far we don't have anything very successful to use that. That is one of the very vague kind of explanation is, you have a kind of a crop habitat diversifications where you have everything together. The pest is coming down, the parasitoids are also higher side. You got the point? Maybe you are not very clear, but still. So you have to have a holistic system where you can have the pest to a minimum level and you have the parasitoid also in the system through a crop habitat diversifying. That's what she was mentioning today, Dr. Geeta Madam also. But one thing you have to understand, what is the outcome of IPM? What is the outcome of IPM? What IPM? Eh? The outcome of IPM is nothing. Who has coined IPM? Gayer and Clark. Don't forget. Eh? The outcome of IPM is pest residue. Not pesticide residue. Pest residue. So you leave a pest residue for the natural means to sustain. Which means don't kill all the pest. Leave 5 to 10 percent of the pest in your system. Be happy with that. So that natural means can sustain. So if you want to eliminate the pest from the scenario, not only the pest will be eliminated, all your beneficials will also be eliminated. Finally, we will also be eliminated. So be careful. Good question. Somebody else? People are hungry, I think. Yeah, Dr. Kannan. Yeah, I got it. Allerodizine only, uh, affiliate parasitoids are working. Because if you see the piperium, the piperium itself is quite bigger. It's convex. So, Encarzia godolope or Encarzia dispersa can parasitize only Allerodicus dispersus or Allerodicus ruji operculatus. And it will never parasitize Bondar's nesting white fly. So, Bondar's nesting fly is mostly checked by the predators. And Bondas nesting, by size itself, it's very smaller in size. So the quantum of honeydew produced is also low. So have a kind of system. And uh, they compete each other also. When the other fellow grows, it come, comes down. Could be, it could be, it could be. See, if you see, uh, whether I do not know whether I have told that or not. We have excellent uh, nest-like structure full of uh, these uh, silver strands. Silver strands are produced from the dorsum. They have the compound pores. 
very if you see under the microscope and he talks about electron microscopy it's still outstanding but even under the compound microscope you will be simply inspired to see these silver strands and these silver strands one way or other it is always creating a kind of uh, a hindrance to the natural bees today morning also madam was mentioning how beautifully uh, apatocrisa will clear all these things clear the uh, uh, what is that all the powdery stuffs all these products and put it on the back and then only it will field so that that all these powdery substances are repellents so they they are very smart so they will clean all the things first make everything a good shave they will make then they will eat them so that is how the mechanism is yes we can accelerate but slowly it is coming down we have excellent natural bees in the coconut system but that should be conserved as well and even your 5% yield loss may not be that much great that what i normally feel in terms of coconut pest management but convincing a farmer especially in pollachi is not that easy so how you have to uh, empower them is very important because in pollachi i have not seen even a single pollinators also so if you go in this trend it will be very very damaging very good very good that's a good attempt naturally we have to study all those things in deeper to make a, a, some more insight into the uh, pest management uh, greater no doubt about that but naturally in white flies no in uh, our system is such a, uh, a brilliant that why this bemisia tabasi alone is uh, creating a lot of confusion because uh, we don't allow even a single white fly of bemisia tabasi on any crop because they are vectors we should not create a situation of that in other system also so we have to very judiciously tackle that just because of not applying insecticide we have to do that that's why when the uh, pest outbreak came we were all i was very cautious even in kwambut i mean alier nagar people all this pesticide company was on the back sides when uh, i started presenting then when i never told anything about insecticide they are all very much uh, uh, worried what this fellow is talking but for me the intentions are different it doesn't mean that it is not causing any damage it will but that is to level it can be uh, subsidized if you take care proper so nutrition health management including the diversification is very important for the white fly management yeah so that is what we scientists are there no we are yeah morning i think doctor even as long as uh, now this exotic white flies are concerned we should know how to live with them if you are uh, if you wanted that it should be very uh, clean and uh, thing just like uh, why how we regularly go to the beauty parlor and all i think it will be a tough exercise we should uh, definitely empower them i think even in indonesia and other places also these white flies are there they are all under check so we should also uh, train them of course they will be worried no doubt about that they will say uh, a lot of yield loss and everything we should i think i have taken a lot of your time 130 i think uh, nelson sir is uh, already 